Got the Beat or Girls on Top was probably the best mess you've ever seen in K-pop. From SM Entertainment just copy and pasting the Super M formula, except not giving the girls a fraction of the money or promotion. There was also members asking, why am I here? To asking fans for more music video views, to missed invitations to perform on huge stages in America, to some really unnecessary hate by netizens. What's new? This is the short but dramatic story of what happened to Got The Beat. But before looking forward, we gotta look back. Back to not that long ago, the end of 2021. Super M was on what we thought was a hiatus since some of the members went to the military. So SM Entertainment was fresh off this super group high they were on. So what is the first thing they do to celebrate the new year of 2022? Well, make the announcement that they were going to do it all over again. Hold up, before we jump into the deep end of this chaotic debut, we gotta find out how did SM Entertainment form Got The Beat. It was a super girl group that represented four generations of K-pop. Let's start with the living legend herself. Hoa is one of the most important faces in K-pop due to her debuting as a solo artist under SM Entertainment at only 13 years old. Yes, even back then, uh, idols were debuting at a crazy young age, so um, nothing really changed. But Boa is credited for bringing K-pop to a global audience, especially breaking into Japan and a bit of America in the early 2000s all by herself. And legitimizing SM Entertainment from near bankruptcy to establishing the whole label as a top K-pop company to be able to bring us all these groups we've seen over the past 20 years. Even before joining the supergroup, Boa was promoting her new song Better and her 10th mini album. Just a little, little, little. On to the second generation, represented by idols from the first nation's girl group, Girls' Generation, Hyoyeon and Taeyeon. Hyoyeon was known for her dancing ability in Girls' Generation, but her activities right before Girls on Top was playing around with DJing and dance music, which shows in her single Dessert, which featured rapper Loopy and idol Soyeon. You know what our dessert? What? Dessert. At the time, Idol was still a relatively new group, but they were about to like peak in their popularity. So Hyoyeon was on top of what's happening in the music scene. Then let's talk about her two-time group member now, Taeyeon. Well, uh, Taeyeon is Taeyeon. I mean, what, what more can I say? Do I need to say more? The literal voice of a generation of K-pop with Girls' Generation. <laughs> and even having a bigger voice with her solo work. dropping What Do I Call You before becoming the main vocalist of this new project group. Now let's welcome the third generation, represented by Sugi and Wendy of Red Velvet. Red Velvet will go down maybe not as the biggest of their generation, but they will go down as the girl group with the most iconic discography of their generation. Before Got The Beat came calling, Red Velvet was on a bit of a break from their latest release. Ooh, but what a release it was. This was probably Red Velvet's greatest and most memorable comeback, Psycho. Also, Sugi was wrapping up her subunit activities with Irene and the song Monster. I'm a little monster. Obviously, you can't go wrong when you add Sugi, the extremely balanced performer, and Wendy, who is probably the best vocal K-pop has seen yet. Yeah, I said it. I mean, what do you expect when you put Taeyeon and Wendy in the same group as the main vocalist? That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Exactly, the same thing he just said. And the final additions were from the fourth generation, the newest, hottest rookies in the industry. s 
Aqua literally just came off their debut with Black Mamba before winter, and Karina joined and finalized the members of Girls on Top, or got the beat. And the choice of adding the newest girl group to their supergroup made sense for two almost similar reasons. Hype was so huge for Espa's debut, so many people were extremely curious to know more about the members, so adding them to the lineup of Girls on Top just brings even more eyes to this project group's debut. Now the big question, why go with the name Girls on Top? And why have the other name you've probably seen around got the beat as well? Apparently, the whole project group is called Girls on Top. Funny enough, through my research, I have not found a moment when they explained why they chose Girls on Top, but I do believe it is a tribute or like an homage to one of Boa's greatest hits of the same name. And there was supposed to be subunits, with the first being Got the Beat. So does that mean that they were gonna like swap out members for the next unit comeback of whatever else name they came up with besides Got the Beat? Like would they swap out Hyoyeon for Giselle or Karina for Irene? That could have actually increased the lifespan of a supergroup project like Girls on Top or even Super M if they kept cycling in and out members from their other groups. That's honestly not a bad idea when you think about it. But sadly, we would never see that happen as there would not be another unit. So from now on, let's just call them Got The Beat since we never actually saw the next subunit and they use Got The Beat more often than the name Girls On Top. All right, let's get back on track. While the smoke from the New Year's fireworks was still in the air, Got The Beat had their even more explosive debut. January 1st, 2022. Imagine kicking the new year off like this. Got to be debuted with Step Back, an electro house performance heavy song that sounds like Mario is jumping on a trampoline in the background. Vocals shined and the performance tore up the stage. While the music and the performance was praised, a lot of people questioned the lyrics of the debut title. Guessing from the group's name, Girls on Top, and the girl boss energy the debut gave off, you would think the whole message was about girl empowerment. But both music critics and K-pop fans called SM Entertainment out for the lyrics. So let's take a look. Most of the track talks about telling other girls to step back from her man. In short, pitting women against each other. Many Korean and international critics and listeners shared the same disappointment in the lyrics of the debut track from this super girl group, but at the same time, praised the vocals for being on a whole nother level. But I had a bigger issue with the lyrics than that. I would listen to the song, because it, it's, it's a solid song. It's a solid debut song. I mean, it, it's a bop. But I listened up to this certain point, and then I would skip to the next song. I just found it so cringy at the moment, but listening to it now again, um, it's all right. I can live with it. But back then, I just couldn't. I just couldn't handle it. You know, there's just, there's just cr silly girl. Regardless, Got The Beat only released this stage video and no music video. And only performed Step Back a handful of times on M Countdown and SM Town Live. They still found a way to pick up three music show wins. On top of that, they also peaked in the top five on both Korean charts, Gaion chart, and the Billboard World Digital Songs chart. While they found somewhat immediate success and were able to put in that effort to perform such a physically demanding choreography, the members had their own drama to deal with. During press interviews for their debut, Poa made this statement. I don't know why I'm here. But that was more of a joke that the group is made up of great dancers and she herself feels out of place. Boa, girl, come on, listen. You were tearing up the stage before I was even born. I don't know if that's a compliment, but it was supposed to be, okay? <laughs> With the debut coming gone, I have to talk about and compare Super M's debut process and Got The Beat's debut process. Which is basically me asking the hard-hitting question, why are girl groups valued less 
than boy groups. If you saw my last video, SM Entertainment literally wrote a blank check to have Super M do anything and everything for the debut process. A debut press conference, showcase, and watch party at Capitol Records in LA, a whole press tour on American TV shows, and even a world tour, and they got a light stick. Not a cheapy acrylic one, like a real legitimate one. How, how did, I'm not gonna say anything, but your group should have a light stick. Super M got all of this within just four months of debuting. What they got the beat get? One song, no B-sides, no debut music video, no tour, no global promotions, only five live performances, and very little promotions in general. Now you could say SM Entertainment learned from Super M not to put all their cash money, all their eggs in one basket all at once, and kind of take the whole super group thing at a slower process with Got The Beat, but it's a super group. It's not your standard regular group, so why even do that in the first place? This is only a small sample of the bigger picture in K-pop, that girl groups get less than boy groups. On average, for every one album a girl group sells, a boy group sells 2.8, almost three albums, mainly due to boy groups having a largely girl fan base where they tend to spend more money and buy more physical product. Girl groups largely dominate the streaming market. To put it simply, girl groups get the ears, boy groups, they get the money. So I can see why SM Entertainment didn't invest in Got The Beat as much as they did with Super M. And also with the backlash from the lyrics of their debut, they could have possibly alienated or put off any potential girl fans that they could have made along the way. Losing that growth they needed in order to be valuable or profitable for SM Entertainment. But with all that being said, as a girl group fan myself, I mean, come on, it's where it's at. I am happy to see that the tide is slowly turning to girl groups' favor with the newer generation. As new girl groups are switching up their concept to more girl crush that appeals to a wider audience than just guys. Nevertheless, the following year, in January 2023, really? Damn, it feels like it's been three years since then. They continued on with their first comeback. A comeback that was pure quality, but it flopped so hard that it basically ended the whole group. Stamp on it is in the same family as Step Back in concept and vibe, but a little more laid back and rhythmic. Luckily, this time, instead of just a single, we got a mini album with B-sides. But at this point, Super M had a mini album and a full album. Just saying. I guess we gotta be happy with the scraps. Hey. Those scraps were delicious though. The same thing is the case here as what I said about Super M. You absolutely can make stellar music when you put these talented all-star lineup together. You won't believe how dangerously good this mini album is. My personal faves are Alter Ego, a song that brings the doom with a nasty buildup like this. And the bless with vocals like this. And Rose is a track that is tempting and menacing at the same time. Even my least favorite track on the album, Mala. Is giving Red Velvet and also, I just want to mention it because of this line. This comeback and this mini album clearly shows that Got The Beat is capable of having their own color compared to the groups they came from in SM Entertainment. Sadly though, good music can't overcome poor promotions and marketing. Stamp On It did peak at number three in Korea's circle chart, but sales were slow as frozen maple syrup. 34,000 copies sold on day one and even less on the second day with 21,000. Even with an insane lineup of members, they couldn't capitalize on all the fan bases as they sold 164,000 albums total. Also, the music video views. That was even worse. For some reason, the performance video was released first, then the music video, meaning most people didn't bother watching the actual music video, leading to the views to barely get more than the performance video did at 18 million. 
This caused Poa to talk about their surprising low views after they finished their stage on M Countdown. <laughs> Poa is half joking here, but of course, that doesn't stop netizens from criticizing what she said. Not just that, but Poa, for some reason, I have yet to find or like theorize, gets unnecessary hate for little things she says here and there in Korea. If you have an explanation, I'd, I'd love to know. Leave it down in the comments. So from a rough debut to even a rougher comeback, things were not looking good for Got The Beat, and it seems like their future was on life support. And the plug was about to be pulled. To add insult to injury, Hyoyeon spilled some tea that they missed out on a breakout moment that could have given them a chance to go global. Weeks after their comeback with Stamp On It wrapped up, Hyoyeon appeared on a radio show where she talked about a surprise invitation Got The Beat and SM Entertainment received when they debuted back in 2021. She said, I am the only one that knows this, but we got an invitation from Coachella. Then she explained why they couldn't attend. At the time, we only had one song so we couldn't go. That actually wasn't a problem though, having one song. Coachella still invited them. They knew that. <laughs> you do realize there are decades of song and discography between the seven members. Imagine Poa, Girls' Generation, Red Velvet, and Espa songs performed on the Coachella stage, creating a unique opportunity not just for Got The Beat, but every single member and their original groups. This, to me, is a huge missed opportunity and a big what if. Big groups today don't even get an invitation to Coachella. And finally, the last kind of sad note for the group is this fan's experience at the last Got To Be fan sign. In early February, this fan went to a fan sign event, which she explained the atmosphere was a bit awkward. The staff made sure there were no phones allowed to film or take photos. The fan sign event went well, but it was Taeyeon's closing words that kind of ended everything. The fan stated, at the end of the fan sign, Taeyeon said this quietly but firmly. The first and last fan sign for Got The Beat has ended. Taeyeon was speaking the truth here because this is all she wrote for Got The Beat. We never got to see a new subunit as SM Entertainment originally planned for Girls On Top. So now the big question, what happened to Got The Beat? Will we see a Got The Beat comeback? Uh, no. From starting off on the wrong foot, to missing that chance to perform at Coachella, to getting hate for no reason, to dividing fan bases, Got The Beat was a mess that no one tried to clean up. But I will say that there's more hope for Got The Beat to come back than Super M. Pause, let me explain. While Super M got the whole world, Girls On Top or Got The Beat has the potential to come back, or at least their concept has potential to come back. That original plan SM had for Got The Beat. Let me be clear here. SM Entertainment has already created a supergroup that has been going strong for the past seven years now. Hey, yo, listen up! I'm, of course, talking about NCT. NCT U, NCT 127, NCT Dream, Wavy, NCT Wish, and even the NCT where they all get together like a Transformer. Go ahead and do that for your girl trainees or your girl idols. Even that model of rotating them in and out. It clearly works and is very possible for a company like SM Entertainment. But again, will they even do it since they're a girl group? Luckily, we got to experience Got The Beat. Their music, their moments together, and what a super group would look like. So I just like to take this opportunity to say big thanks to the members for your hard work and let's support them in their individual and group activities. So that's the story of the best mess in K-pop got to be. If you haven't checked out my last week's video about Super M, go ahead and check that out. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like. And if you're new, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a new What Happened video. And here we go. Who should I make my next video on? Give me anything and everything. Any names in K-pop, put it down in the comments. And maybe I'll choose yours 
for the next one. Also, if you want to support me and make more videos happen, go down to my Patreon and support me there. I'm thinking of bringing reactions or like album listening things to Patreon so that there's more content, but I'll let you guys know when that happens. But again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.